Uh, next up is we're going to do some calculations. Yeah. It's been a while since we broke out our calculator and had a meaningful, I guess we electroplating. That was pretty good. But uh, we're going to do some calculations uh, involving uh, kinetics of nuclear equations and nuclear reactions. And one of the things that's going to be useful is we are going to um, use the integrated rate law, first order integrated rate law. It turns out that radioactive decay processes are first order. So they just, it's linear with concentration, how much radiation would be produced. And so here's our first order rate equation. Integrated rate law. And it's a little bit, it's just um, in a different form than we previously used. Uh, previously, we had concentrations of our reactants in there at initial, t uh, initial time and time t. Now we just use N for an amount. Because we're not, gonna need, we're not talking about solutions anymore, primarily. So we're just, we don't have to worry about the molarity. We're just going to worry about the amount. And so we just label it slightly different. All right, so N sub zero would be the initial amount. of the isotope. Mm -hmm. Switch up my arrows. And sub T would be, um, be the amount of the isotope at time T however long that is. Amount of, what? Amount of the radioactive isotope. You're going to make me write that, aren't you? Uh -uh. Mm. K, what was that? That's a lowercase k. What constant. was that? Constant. What, what, what constant? Rate constant. And then, of course, T is time. Here's uh, what we're going to use it for. Similar, very similar to uh, what uh, the reasons why we use it in, uh, could use it in kinetics for a chemical reaction. Okay, but uh, like we talked about yesterday, dating materials. Okay, so you have, you know how much carbon-14 would be in a living plant that could make paper. You dig up a piece of paper at some archeological site, you pretend you're Indiana Jones, okay? And you dig up some piece of paper, you wanna figure out how old it is, you find out how, many carbon, how much carbon-14 it has then. You can solve for T, okay? And figure out how old that uh, piece of paper is. Or if you're using uh, a radioactive isotope for medical purposes, like for imaging purposes, uh, for diagnostic or just treatment, uh, you might need to figure out how much you're going, how much active ingredient you have. The radioactive isotope was shipped to the hospital with the, with this amount of isotope in it. You've had it on your shelf for two weeks. How much radioactive isotope is present? Okay, so you might need to figure out how much radioactive isotope is left in a sample. So essentially, you're going to be solving for one of those variables. All right, uh, so we definitely need to know the rate constant. Right. It turns out there's a really easy equation that we can derive, get ready, get excited, to calculate the rate constant if you know the half-life. Right? And the half-lives of radioactive isotopes are widely known. Okay, We can look those up, and so we can calculate the rate constant. So for half-lives, All right, so we're T sub one half, okay. At the half-life, the amount at time T 
is equal to one, one half the amount of time t is equal to the initial amount. So if you start off with, well, I don't know what, it is, 24, 24 radioactive atoms, okay? Uh, one half-life goes, uh, goes by, you've got 12 radioactive isotopes, right? Radioactive isotopes. So if you started out with 24, one half, put it on the wrong side, one half times the initial amount, my bad. And sub t equals one half. So let's uh, calculate, let's put that in to our integrated rate law. So now we have natural log of n sub t, but I'm gonna substitute the one half n sub zero in there for n sub t. So instead of putting n sub t on top, I'm gonna put n one half n sub zero. That equals negative k time, and we're talking about the half-life, so t sub one half. By doing that, here's why I did that, what happens to my initial amount, n sub zero? It cancels out. And that's the sound it makes when it cancels out. So now I've got natural log of one half equals negative k sub t sub one half. And if your calculator still works or someone else, what is the natural log of one half? Negative 0 0.693? Yes. All right. Equals negative k t sub one half. All right. And so we put this in terms of t sub one half or rate constant k. It's the same value, just divide both sides by a negative k. And so what you will find very useful is the half-life equals 0 0.693 over the rate constant. Normally we rearrange it to solve for k. If we know the half-life, we can calculate k, or vice versa. If you're in the lab and you determine the rate constant for a radioactive isotope, you can determine its half-life.